So what Luther is, he's not abandoning his commitment to Romans 13. He's saying, oh, the lesser magistrate has a place in, Rome. in, the, in Romans 13. Right. The Lutheran princes knew that the Holy Roman Emperor didn't much like them. So they decided to get together and create a defensive alliance against the emperor. They then came to Luther and asked Luther for his blessing on this, and he said, absolutely not. Right. And they said, what? He said, well, Romans 13, you're supposed to obey, uh, obey the, the powers that be. That's the emperor, which means you, know, you, can, you can do civil disobedience, but you have no right of active resistance. Now, this left the princes in a bit of a quandary, so they did the only thing that made sense. They sent in the lawyers to uh, argue Luther around. And they made an argument that said, look, the, the Holy Roman Emperor is an elective office. The people who elect him have the responsibility of overseeing him. And if he violates fundamental oaths that he's taken or the uh, constitution, the de facto constitution of the empire, it's their duty to resist him. And Luther said, okay, well, if that is in fact the legal structure of the empire, then it is theologically acceptable as well for the lesser magistrate to lead resistance against the superior magistrate. So what Luther is, he's not abandoning his commitment to Romans 13. He's saying, oh, the lesser magistrate has a place in Romans, in the, 13. In Romans 13. Right. So clearly if the lawyers come in and are arguing this to Luther, uh, this is a tradition in medieval Christendom. Yeah, uh, I think they're, they're certainly working out of the de facto, it's not a written constitution, but the de facto constitution of the, the empire, and they're applying logic to it. If, they, if these people elect him, they have authority over him in some sense. Right. So um, the, this idea of resistance by the lesser magistrates then becomes part and parcel of all continental resistance theory. You get it through Calvin, you get it through other people as well. It's what goes on in France and so on. When you cross the channel, Okay. It's not just Scotland, it's England, it's people like uh, Poine and others. When you cross the channel, they start arguing differently. They start saying, no, the right of resistance, ideally, yeah, you wanna go with the lesser magistrates, but even the people have a right to resist because the covenant that is established between the king and the people mean that the people then have rights vis-a-vis -vis the king. And if the king breaks those, uh, the conditions of his kingship, the people have a right to resist. That's a uniquely insular, a, a British Isle uh, approach to resistance theory. You get it in England, you get it pointedly in Scotland. Mm -hmm.